What's up everybody? I'm Ryan. I've been playing Minecraft too much. One more block. One more block. One more block. One more block. All right, and yes, that is right. I have been playing too much Minecraft and it has been hindering my attention to the site, but I've put a stop to that and I will be putting a bigger emphasis on Thistle Potions going forward. Anyways, on to the news. Apparently Kevin Butler is not only all things VP PlayStation, he's apparently the VP of Bridgestone Tires and Bridgestone Tires advertising involving a Wii. Sony is apparently not very happy with this as they decided to sue Kevin Butler, or as he's known in the film industry, Jerry Lambert, for damages to the character and the brand. Which is kind of strange when you consider the fact that he's an actor, the whole point of his job is to star in roles in commercials, film, or whatever the case is, as himself but as a different character. And pretty much everything that he's been in so far has been him in a dress shirt wearing a tie. And Kotaku actually pointed that out in one of the more recent posts and actually brought up a great point that pretty much everything he's done is a, a dress shirt and a tie. So if anybody's at fault here, it's Sony who basically stole the intellectual property from every other commercial and TV show that Jerry Lambert's ever been in for Kevin Butler. But in closing, the man's got to eat, he's got to find work, he's an actor, this is his job, and obviously Kevin Butler's not really that big and important anymore because Sony's not pushing out ads with the character, so he needs to find something else. Granted, maybe he shouldn't have picked up something with the Nintendo Wii, a competing product, so quickly, but still, it's actually a Bridgestone Tires ad. So, when you think about it, it actually makes no sense at all, and this is Sony just being Sony. Retro City Rampage has been released for the PSN and the PC and coming soon to Xbox Live. If you don't know what Retro City Rampage is, have you played an NES? Have you played any of the more popular NES games? Well then you definitely want to play this game because it's basically a parody of all the games you loved from the NES era packaged in a top-down GTA style driving shooting game with platforming elements as well. I highly recommend this game. I've only played it for about an hour so far because the game just came out, but I've already ran into the Ninja Turtles. They attacked me and I gunned them down. Check this out. I just found a turtle van. And it even has guns. So you can shoot stuff just like the TMNT game on the NES. And this is kind of hard to do. It is absolutely worth playing. It is a blast. At its core, it's basically a Grand Theft Auto game, like the old school top-down Grand Theft Auto games, but there are still plenty of other levels that have you platforming, shooting stuff. There's a cover system. Yeah, a cover system in a top-down. Yeah, I'm not even, it, it works. Just go buy it. It's friggin' awesome. Are you a fan of Crazy Taxi? Do you have an iPhone? Well, it's coming to iPhone at the end of the month. I don't know, it's Crazy Taxi. What else gotta say? And yet another title has fallen victim to On Disc DLC, this time Resident Evil 6. But apparently they say that the On Disc DLC is there for technical reasons. I mean, technically, they wanna make money. Am I right? But in all seriousness, On Disc DLC hurts some, helps others. I mean, in reality, it sucks that you have to buy something that's already there. You should get what's already available, but what if half the code is there? It's On Disc because most of the resources are there, but not everything is there because they're still finishing it. So technically they've been working on it after you bought the game, and then they put in the rest of the resources, which doesn't take up a whole lot of space, which in turn shows up as a small download, which makes you believe that you're buying on disc DLC and it's just unlocking it in reality it's actually still technically DLC but it's on disc DLC on disc DLC is very touch and go personally I think we should just get over it at this point I mean the companies are gonna do what they're gonna do we're gonna buy the games no matter what they do it's almost like gas at this point they can drive the price of gas all the way up to $10 a gallon people will still buy gas because 
they still want to drive their cars. So if they're going to keep putting on disc DLC and games, people still want to play games on their gaming system, so they'll keep buying the games. So really, if you really honestly care about this, then stop buying games and tell all your friends to stop buying games, start a petition for people to stop buying games, and then this will go away. Until then, on disc DLC is here to stay, and I guess there's no other way of putting it, but get over it. Speaking of on-disc DLC, Nintendo has released DLC for New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS, and it weighs in at a whopping one megabyte. One megabyte. Some people are speculating that these levels are already on the cartridge before the game shipped, and it is, in that case, on-cart DLC, on-disc DLC, however you want to word it. <clears throat> Other people are saying that it's just reusing resources that the rest of the game use, sound bites, textures, skins, and so on and so forth. So. The, all it needs to download is the coding to rearrange those re assets, and that doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Either way, I think the real question here is not did Nintendo just sneak on disc DLC past us, but rather Nintendo is doing DLC, which in my opinion is kind of strange. I mean, I've grown up with Nintendo for years, pretty much from the NES era, and I've seen games like Mario games ship when they're finished, and then they're done, and then you play it, and then you're done with it. So the whole idea of actually adding more content to a Mario game seems very strange and very weird. And that may just be my opinion because of how long I've been playing games and how long I've associated it with this franchise. You may have a different outlook on it. Which brings us to question of the week. How do you guys feel about Nintendo doing DLC? Do you think it's great? Do you think it's bad? How are they doing it so far as far as what they're offering and how much they're charging for? The extra levels for New Super Mario Bros. 2 are $7.50 and you get three packs, which each consist of three levels, so technically you're getting nine levels for seven bucks, more or less. Which, so far in my experience, since I've played through them, I feel like it was worth it. I mean, Mario levels, you don't really get bored of them very fast. If you're a more traditional Mario gamer, you just run, jump, and you try to get a higher score, or you just want to run and jump through the level. Either way, um, I'm thinking it's good so far, but it still feels a little strange. It almost feels a little bit dirty that Nintendo is doing DLC. And I'm kind of torn on this, so I kind of want to see what you guys think. If you guys think that it's a good idea that Nintendo's doing DLC, or if you think it's a bad idea that Nintendo's doing DLC. So let me know in the comments below. And as always, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, all the various social networking outlets. And I will see you guys next week.